Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, Precise users. Thank you very much for your attendance and participation in this talk. My name is Satish Chimakurthy. I work for a small business called ATA Engineering in Northern Virginia, USA. We are an employee-owned small business with a full-time staff of around 180, and we specialize in engineering services and methods development. We do have many offices spread across the country, but our headquarters is in San Diego. For this presentation, I'm supported by my colleague, Mike Nucci, who works out of a San Diego office. In the next 25 minutes or so, Mike and I will present some of the work that ATA has done as part of a US Air Force sponsored small business innovation research project in the context of multi-physics modeling of laser biological tissue interactions. For this work, ATA has partnered with Professor Stephen Jacks of the University of Washington in Seattle, as well as with Dr. Richard London of the Lawrence Livermore National Lab. The project team is extremely grateful for the financial support and assistance of the Air Force and our technical point of contact, Dr. Andrew Wombi, who works out of the Air Force lab in Fort Sam Houston in Texas. This is a brief outline of our talk today. I will first provide a very quick introduction to laser tissue interactions and then provide an overview of the precise based multi-physics framework that we prototyped for this project. After that, Mike and I will briefly discuss precise adapters for a light transport, heat transport, and a computational fluid dynamics solver called loci -CAM, all of which were developed as part of this project. We will then present some preliminary results from a verification study and finally make some concluding remarks before opening the floor of the Q&A. Moving on, basically after energy deposition, lasers can interact with biological tissues in many ways. And the interactions generally involve physical mechanisms that can be based on photochemical, phototermal, and photomechanical effects. And these mechanisms involve some basic physical phenomena such as light transport, thermal transport, hydrodynamics, and stress wave propagation. In photothermal interactions, temperature is the governing parameter. Depending upon the temperature rise and duration of exposure, different tissue effects such as hypothermia, coagulation, and ablation may occur. In photomechanical interactions, stress waves are induced in tissues due to rapid laser heating, and under certain conditions, the waves can even fragment, that is, the, break the tissue up. Finally, in the photochemical case, light can interact with tissues and cause a cascade of biological events such as bond breaking, cross-linking, and radical formation to occur. There are many laser tissue interaction mechanisms, and I've listed some here. They're all broadly classified into two categories, those that involve vaporization of water and those that do not. I won't go through this in detail, but I just wanted to point out that microcavitation, carbonization, and popcorn effect that you frequently encounter in literature involve vaporization of water and subsequent heat and pressure buildup within the tissue. And photoacoustic disruption, thermal lensing, self-focusing are some examples of mechanisms that do not necessarily involve vaporization of water. And lastly, there are some mechanisms such as self-focusing, laser-induced breakdown that involve nonlinear effects. Here are some original photographs from experiments showing various laser tissue interaction mechanisms in action. First, on the left-hand side top, we have microcavitation in melanosomes that deals with vapor bubble formation and expansion in some tissues. As you may be aware, melanosomes are pigmented granules that are found in the retinal pigment epithelial RPE cells in the eye and in keratinocytes of pigmented skin. The second one at the top is a picture showing photoacoustic disruption in bovine retinal melanosomes, wherein the damage occurs due to stress waves and wave reflections in material interfaces. And then the picture on the right-hand side top corresponds to rupture of skin tissue due to rapid vaporization of water. And there are many other mechanisms such as explosive vaporization, plasma-induced breakdown you know, that you see here, and all of which are some examples of laser tissue interaction mechanisms. In the interest of time, we'll just go through the explosive vaporization mechanism in some detail in the next slide. Explosive vaporization involves superheating of water at a free surface and rapid vaporization and subsequent material removal in a tissue that is uh, basically optically homogeneous. And in this mechanism, both thermal confinement as well as energy deposition that is sufficient to generate a threshold temperature are both important. Basically, thermal confinement happens when 
your laser pulse duration is shorter than the thermal relaxation time, which is the time taken for the absorbed laser energy to dissipate away by thermal conduction. The picture you see on the left-hand side bottom corresponds to a plot of tissue coordinate on the x-axis and temperature on the y-axis. Coordinate z equal to zero corresponds to the tissue surface. What this plot says is that once the temperature of the heated zone near the free surface is above a threshold, in this case, it is 120 degrees Celsius, explosion occurs and material is removed. And that is shown somewhat crudely in the second picture here, where you see a block of homogeneous tissue that's being irradiated with a pulse laser over the LPW that is less than the thermal relaxation time denoted as TRT. Basically what's happening here is that superheating of water takes place leading to rapid vaporization that causes the uppermost layers of the heated portion of the tissue to ablate. And then and you see that here in the picture. That said, I would like to emphasize that the threshold temperature we are discussing here is highly variable and is obviously dependent upon the mechanical strength of the tissue. Moving on, so as you imagine, laser tissue interaction modeling requires a wide range of physics capabilities, including light transport, heat transport, tissue damage, fluid dynamics, mechanical damage, and molecular dynamics. And, and you want a versatile multi-physics tool that incorporates all of these physics. However, the tools that are currently available you know, in literature are not built especially for the purpose of laser tissue interactions. And also, Many investigations in this area so far have been performed experimentally. Keeping this in mind, we developed and prototyped a versatile multi-physics framework using precise you know, to be able to model a wide range of physics, to account for diverse scales, and also to create an extensible software framework. In order to accomplish this, a number of single physics solvers were chosen and some adapters were written to couple them all with pieces. So as you can see in this table, the project team has evaluated a number of open source physics solvers and prioritized them based on some criteria, including capabilities, availability of good quality documentation, online health, um, you know, whether or not you know, the solver is already coupled with precise, licensing flexibility. And final scores are shown in this table for each of the solvers in the light transport, solid mechanics and heat transport, CFT, molecular dynamics, and ablation categories. So for example, for light transport, we ended up choosing two open source solvers called MCXYZ.C and Full Monty as the top priority ones. Similarly, we chose a nonlinear optic solver called GF Core. And for CFD, we chose Open Foam and Low Side Chem. Our idea has been to first focus on the top priority solvers in each of these categories, but eventually bring the lower priority ones as well in products. Of course, as you can imagine, if new information comes in, then the solvers may need to be reprioritized. And in order to come up with the priority ratings for the solvers, we gained some working knowledge of each of them by setting up and running some demonstration level problems. This slide and the next one are snapshots of some results from simulations that I wanted to highlight. You know, I recognize that this slide is busy, but I'll quickly walk you through it. The picture that you see on the left-hand side top corresponds to light transport results obtained for a tissue sample modeled mcxyz.c on the left and compared to those from a full Monty simulation on the right, and both have agreed with each other. The animation that you see here on the top, in the center, shows the evolution of a vapor bubble around a laser heated wall. This was modeled in Loci Chem. And the animation here uh, corresponds to a very simple and rudimentary molecular dynamic simulation of pulsed laser heating that was set up in lamps. In this manner, we gain working knowledge of other solvers as well, including the biomechanics FE solver FE bio and the open source nonlinear FE solver you know, Aster. Along the same lines, we also gain working knowledge of a nonlinear optic solver called GF Core, which is being developed at the University of Arizona by Professor Miroslav Polisic. I won't go into these in any detail, but I hope you get the idea behind this exercise. Overall, the multi-physics framework created with Precise involves fully open source codes and is able to simulate a variety of laser tissue interaction mechanisms. Again, as I mentioned, this framework supports multi-physics coupled workflows involving a variety of physics involving light transport, fluid flow and thermal heat conduction in the solid, wave propagation, plasma physics, and molecular dynamics as well. 
And I don't have to tell this audience about all the different coupling schemes that Precise supports, including and not limited to serial explicit, serial implicit, and serial explicit with subcycling. On the whole, there is a landscape of multi-physics coupling workflows that we can talk about in the context of laser tissue interactions. If your interest is in, let's say, simulating microcavitation without damage, you can have a one-way coupling between a light transport code and a fluid flow and heat transport code. If you then come and say that you're interested in having dynamic optical properties, you end up with potentially a three-way coupling involving light transport, fluid flow, and the dynamic solver. And then you can introduce a solid deformable component in the tissue and account for fluid solid interaction. Then you can say that your solid not only deforms, but also conducts heat. And so you add a one-way thermomechanics coupling here, and you can have conjugate heat transfer with the fluid, you know, dynamic thermal properties and solid mechanical damage and ablation. You can also have multi-scale coupling with molecular dynamics. And then lastly, you can replace the light transfer block here with nonlinear optics uh, to account for nonlinear effects. Mm -hmm. I know that this is a very busy slide, but basically the point of this is to show that depending upon what you're interested to simulate, the precise based multi-physics coupling workflow can grow or shrink. And obviously simulation of a landscape such as this one must therefore be done very systematically, incrementally and iteratively while doing VNV at each stage. So moving on, in order to demonstrate multi-physics couplings by precise using a light transport and a heat transport solver, we created a couple of precise adapters that we will talk about next. So the light transport solver that we considered is mcxyz.c. As I mentioned, it's an open source solver based on the Monte Carlo method and was written by Professor Steven Jacks, who is a partner of ATA Engineering on this project and is one of the pioneers in the fields of tissue optics and laser tissue interactions. Basically, the code creates a 3D grid of voxels and assigns a tissue type to each of them. And photons are launched from a given location on the surface of the tissue and are then tracked to the tissue as they get absorbed and scattered and eventually getting attenuated. The normalized energy deposition and normalized fluence rate a couple of output quantities from the solver and, and the pictures here correspond to the same. So originally mcxyz.c was written in NCC and given our interest to develop the adapters in Python, we wrapped the C code up using SWIG and then used the adapter class methodology to create the precise adapter. Now, as seen in this table, the adapter is able to export volumetric energy deposition values and import op you know, optical properties, including the tissue absorption and scattering coefficients. Given our interest to demonstrate the coupling of the light solver mcxyz.c with a tissue heat transport and damage solver, we picked up an existing open source solver called MCMATLAB. Basically, this code solves the heat diffusion equation coupled with the Arrhenius damage integral to model heat diffusion and tissue damage respectively. The code solver is written in C, but exposed to MATLAB via max functions. Again, given our interest in developing the adapter in Python, we wrapped the C code up as usual via Swing, and then a precise adapter was created using the adapter class software engineering methodology. As shown in the table here, this adapter exports optical properties, including absorption coefficient and the scattering coefficient and imports energy deposition. So basically this is doing exactly the opposite of what the adaptive MCXYZ.C is said to do. With the Python based adapters for MCXYZ.C and the heat, heat solver named HeatSim.C here, both in place, they were coupled using precise. Currently for this coupling, only the serial explicit scheme is supported. The pictures here, simply show the incremental steps we took to develop the coupled code and uh, I'm not going through this in any detail. We tested the one-way and two-way coupling capabilities using a demonstration case that we found in the literature. What you're looking at here on the top left is a tissue configuration that is composed of a layer of epidermis that you see in white at the top, water at the bottom in blue and a blood vessel at the center in red. This geometry is in 3D, but what you're seeing here is just a slice of it. The picture on the bottom left corresponds to the location of the laser spot of 0.02 centimeter radius on the surface. It's a five watt laser with a wavelength of 500 nanometers that is irradiating this tissue for 0.01 seconds. The two pictures in the second column here correspond to the temperature distribution and tissue damage computed with a coupled code with one-way coupling. You know, that is the one without dynamic optical properties. 
When you compare the results in this one-way case with those of the two-way that includes dynamic optical properties, you'll see here that in the two-way case, the magnitudes of the temperature are lower. And also, if you look at the blood vessel, you do not see damage that you otherwise see in the one-way case. So the results that you just saw are from a coupled code involving only two solvers, light transport and another solver that computes both heat diffusion as well as tissue damage. During the course of this project, we attempted to try the serial explicit coupling scheme using three solvers, including light transport, heat transport, and then an independent tissue damage solver. However, we reached a deadlock with the setup. We got in touch with precise support and we were advised to use a fully implicit coupling scheme until this is resolved. An issue was created by the support team and I just thought I should mention this. So at this point, I would like to hand this over to my colleague, Mike Nucci, who's going to talk about the precise adapter that we created for a CFD solver called Low Side Cam. Mike, uh, it's all yours now. Thanks, Satish. I'll take the next couple of minutes to talk about the precise adapter for Low Side Cam. Low Side Cam is a ram based finite volume flow solver for arbitrary polyhedra. It's the production code at NASA Marshall and widely used at many other NASA centers. It has some key features making it ideally suited for multi-physics simulations. For example, it has a conjugate heat transfer model, a robust mesh deformation algorithm for fluid structure interaction, a finite rate chemically reacting flow model, and a multi-phase flow model. Lociceum is developed at Mississippi State University by Professor Ed Luke. It is open source, but controlled under US ITAR rules. It is distributed by Mississippi State University as well, and a copy can be requested from the link shown. CHEM is the application name, and it is built on the LOSI framework, hence the name LOSI-CHEM. LOSI is a C++-based open source computational framework. It has no ITAR restrictions and is completely open source. It allows for efficient, extensible, scalable, and parallel computation. LOSI uses a declarative instead of imperative programming paradigm. It uses a rule-based approach to automatically assemble simulation components into a working application. In LOSI parlance, a rule can be thought of as a computational unit that has inputs and outputs. Within the source code, a rule can appear, the rules can appear in any order. And at runtime, LOSI deduces the execution order based on their inputs and outputs to the respective rules. LOSI allows for extreme extensibility through its modules, which I'll discuss in the coming slides. It has a mature, proven track record of efficient performance on HPC machines. It is also developed at Mississippi State University by Professor Ed Luke, and a copy of LOSI can be requested from the link shown. Modules greatly enhance the extensibility of LOSI CAM. Uh, modules themselves are dynamically linked shared libraries that are written in the LOSI framework. They allow for the implementation of new features without any modification to the base program. Modules can be used uh, to add new boundary conditions, physics models such as turbulence models, uh, coupled to other codes, or even uh, enable the output of new variables. At ATA, we're active developers of modules for LOSI CAM. Many of these modules are available on our GitHub page. The link is shown there. This precise adapter module that we have developed uh, for LOSI CAM, we also plan to upload it to our GitHub page uh, pending uh, approval from our US government sponsors. The module developed for LOSI CAM uh, for the precise adapter was written in the LOSI framework using Precise's C++ API. It was developed with Precise version 1.5.2, as that was the latest uh, version at the time of development. It uses the callback functionality software engineering methodology. Um, this means that the base code CAM does not have to be modified and all of the uh, logic for the module and the precise API calls, all of that is uh, self-contained within the module. And th this is enabled by low size module functionality. 
the, the precise API calls themselves are placed in loci rules, and then loci will determine the execution order and frequency of, of those rules based on their inputs and outputs. This shows an abstract representation of the rules that are present in the module. Um, remember that in the source code, the rules can appear in any order, but on this slide, they're nominally in the order of execution. First, uh, the left column, top down, and then to the right column, uh, top down. So e each rule will have a purpose. For example, the first rule, the purpose is to get the configuration from the XML file. So in essence, this is the output of that rule. And within each rule, the associated precise uh, API calls will reside. So in that first rule, there's a API call to configure to uh, read that XML file. For the sake of time, I won't uh, go into detail on each of these rules, but there are different rules for registering the mesh. And in, inside of that rule, the associated API call to set the mesh vertices is called. There are rules for reading the imported data and writing the exported data. And the uh, precise API calls associated with those actions are, are contained in those rules. And there's also a rule to advance the solver uh, to the next time step and to uh, finalize uh, any interaction with Precise when the simulation is, is complete. The so Loci Chem Adapter supports mechanical and thermal coupling on boundary surfaces. Um, the targeted application here would be for fluid structure interaction and or conjugate heat transfer. It also supports thermal coupling in volumetric regions. And the targeted application here would be for energy deposition from a laser like Satish was discussing earlier. Currently, the adapter only supports explicit coupling. Um, loci cams time step can be made equal to that of a partner code and they can run in lockstep. Or loci, cam, loci cams time step can be an integer multiple of the partner code's time step, allowing it to subcycle. The use case here would be for conjugate heat transfer where, for example, the fluid and thermal physical time scales may be very different from one another. So you may not want to run the, the codes with the same time step. All of the data imported and exported uh, in the adapter is done at the nodes. Um, for surface coupling, uh, it's supported to export nodal force and nodal heat load and import a nodal displacement and nodal temperature. For volumetric coupling, it is supported to export a nodal temperature and import a volumetric heat source at, at the nodes. Loci Cam itself is a self-centered solver, so internally it needs uh, data at face centers and cell centers. So the data it needs is interpolated from the nodal values that it receives from the adapter. And I'll finish with an example. This is a co-simulation uh, using loci cam and the precise adapter with a surrogate solver for a flexible ramp in a wind tunnel. The purpose of this example is to just demonstrate that data is being exchanged between the two solvers and the coupling is working as uh, we expect it to. We're not trying to uh, generate any specific uh, uh, flow results. So we begin with a loci cam mesh that has named boundaries and volume regions. There are three volume regions named zone one, two, and three, as shown in the schematic. And there are named boundary conditions. Uh, we have an inflow boundary upstream, an outflow boundary downstream, and we have three distinct uh, viscous wall boundary patches. Um, the co-simulation with the surrogate solver is set up to exercise both the uh, surface and volume couplings that are enabled by the adapter. So. For surface couplings, um, the surrogate solver will pass a prescribed displacement for each of the three individual viscous wall boundary surfaces that are engaged in the coupling. The deformation will be uh, a sinusoidal uh, over the individual patch. Thermal coupling is uh, prescribed on just the ramp uh, viscous wall boundary. That's the upstream most boundary. And again, it's a sinusoidal described, uh, prescribed uh, distribution of, of temperature. Volumetric coupling is set up in zone three where uh, the surrogate solver will assign a volumetric heat source 
And this heat source will vary linearly as, and it will reach its uh, maximum as, it, uh, as we move away from the viscous wall. So here we see a contour plot of the coupled solution, and it's showing the expected uh, surface boundary deformation. You can see each of those three individual boundaries. Uh, there's a hint of a sinusoidal deformation, um, and that's a, a result of the surrogate code uh, um, prescribing a sinusoidal deformation on each of those boundaries. On the ramp boundary, we see increased surface heating due to the sinusoidal temperature distribution that was prescribed by the surrogate code. And then in zone three, we see increased heating uh, due to the volumetric heat source that was prescribed. And that heating is, uh, is larger as we move away from the, the wall as, as uh, expected. So this is showing that the uh, precise adapter is allowing the uh, exchange of uh, surface and volume data uh, and working uh, as we expect it to. And now I'll pass it back to Satish for some concluding remarks. Thank you very much, Mike. So on the whole, to conclude, I would like to say that we developed an initial concept design and prototype of a precise based versatile multiphysics framework that's entirely open source. Second, by virtue of the working knowledge that we gained of the different components of the framework, and based on the preliminary results we generated, we think that this design has a huge potential to simulate you know, many of the laser tissue interaction mechanisms that are of interest to us and to the community. In general, the ability to couple black box solvers and disparate physics solvers by precise is a huge advantage, and we appreciate the precise team for developing such a versatile and outstanding library. And just to be clear, we developed three new precise adapters so far, and all of them are for open source solvers, except loci CAM, which is open source, but I'm ITER controlled. As part of the future work, the plan is to upgrade the adapters to support the latest version of precise, add support for implicit couplings, and make those available to the community via GitHub. And then most importantly, run additional core simulations to analyze the many laser tissue interaction mechanisms of interest. I would like to once again acknowledge the financial support provided by the US Air Force and technical support provided by Dr. Andrew Wombi. I would also like to acknowledge the other project team members that include Dr. Eric Blades of ATA, Professor Stephen Jacks of the University of Washington, and Dr. Richard London of the Lawrence Livermore National Lab in California. That said, we thank you very much for your attention and are now open to any questions you may have.